we're going to be building a chassis around this P1X8 processor board using Lego Technique parts. This is a 15 hole strip. Any 3 millimeter diameter or similar imperial screw will do the job. Make sure that you get these screws in the right holes. Distance here is quite critical, you'll discover why in a moment, but we put another 15 hole Lego beam on the underneath. You can always try different lengths as long as you can get a similar effect. Now these are Lego pins, uh, they're little pegs, Lego pegs or pins. Slip these over these screws and into the hole in the beam and these in fact create a sturdy arrangement for us so that we don't end up with a wobbly structure. What we're doing essentially is we're just making a ladder a ladder frame structure there. So what we can do is we can remove this from the board now and just have a look at that. You could start by just making this structure. I'm just going to make this robot using as few parts as possible. There are many different ways to mount your servo motors to your robot but these particular Lego parts are quite useful. This is a commonly available hobby server. We're going to use this as a drive unit. We need to check if our spacing here is correct so we just do that. You don't want to put a lot of torque or a lot of strength into tightening up these little nuts and bolts because you're going to hurt the Lego and if you look after the Lego you can use it many many times. Effectively we need four of these mounted hold the robot motors in place. Once we've mounted these parts we just drop the servo in there. Remember the front of the robot is by this white breadboard part where we can mount infrared sensors and the robot drives along. We actually want the shaft we want the shaft of our small servo unit to be forwards, not there, but here. And those are your extra two holes in your seven hole beam, which gives us a little bit of flexibility. If you mount the motors right down there, it might make the robot a little bit tall and unstable. Notice you don't have to hold that securely with the pliers or anything because you'll over tighten it and crush the Lego. Notice that it needs to stick out an appreciable length. It is the alignment of these holes of the Lego is not exactly perfect but because we're using an M3 screw, machine screw, um, it gives you a little bit of play. So don't put one screw in and tighten it up. You must put all, drop all four in and then tighten them up in turn so that it doesn't go out of alignment. In this instance you're going to want a washer under the head of your small machine screw and you can drop it in there, drop it in there, turn it around and drop in the small machine screw there, over there. Okay, with all four screws in place you want a second washer over here and then a small nut. Take your tweezers, you find another washer and you put that in there and you find a small machine nut, M3 nut and put it in there and holding it in place give the little machine screw a spin just till it catches the nut. Don't tighten everything up completely. Now, oops, falling out on the other side you go through the same process. You don't need anything more than a kitchen table top to do this type of engineering but you can learn enough to get started as an engineer. Don't forget to visit www.robotscience.co.za where there are photo sequences and detailed instructions of how to make this clever little robot that's reprogrammable from any common personal computer. Right, so here you will see we've mounted up the servo motors. 
we're going to use second hand laptop batteries that I get from a recycling company for free. Do be careful with lithium batteries because if charged or applied incorrectly they can in fact explode or burn. Do visit www.robotscience.co.za for more information about batteries, rechargeable batteries and battery safety. This is in fact a laptop battery with the maker's model number and all that warning and safety information peeled off. Here you can see the batteries inside and you remove them being careful not to cut your fingers on all the metal bits inside. There's some pretty sharp stuff in there so do be careful. Our batteries are going to sit there. That's the side with the ring around it side of the ring around it there you can see that indentation that's the positive side by the way don't ever charge lithium batteries together in series you could cause a fire charge them individually unless you've got a specialized charger that monitors each battery's voltage as they charge and what we've created is we've created a structure using 15 whole lego beams the batteries are going to sit here to actually fit this to the chassis um, there's a little bit of a clash between the solder parts of the bottom of the board we're going to actually need to put spaces in over there pins are wonderful in that they hold the part until you can screw it securely into place and as you go along each step of the way just check things are looking good to make these battery packs you need a slightly longer machine screw you need the rounded head part to be sticking out here so it doesn't hurt the insulation on the battery that part is going to stick out the back if it's too long there it's going to touch up against your circuit board and more than likely cause a very expensive short circuit which may cook your electronics put a washer here to pre preserve the Lego and a small locking nut there put it in place and look and what you will see is that when up against the spaces there is in fact nut there and it's not short circuiting up against the bottom of the circuit board so here they all are waiting for a washer and a lock nut right so there's our semi finished battery pack structure and this is a normal um, length lego peg there are also these ones which are three beam width and you can in fact put another Lego beam there, so that's three in total. The annoying thing about this black three beam width pin and the blue one and all the other three beam ones is that the hole down the middle doesn't let you easily put a M3 screw, machine screw through there. You've got to take an M3 drill and you've got to core that out a little bit. There you can see the hole and it's a little bit blocked up inside. I normally do this with a knife but some child out there is going to cut their fingers off so I'd rather use these quality clippers that are quite sharp. Okay so here we've trimmed away. Right what we're going to try next is we're going to put these three pins there and there and then we're going to put these extraordinarily useful parts over there and there notice this one is wobbly we're keeping that gap open there so we need to put more of these through 90 degrees in other words like so and like so and we put this there with those pegs sticking up like that we can simply mount this piece over there notice the we've clipped away those pegs put our electrodes in there through these holes if that were to clash with a wheel we can always trim away that excess plastic part one thing we are going to need to do is mount wheels onto our robot so that we get the robot at the right height and level but we can always change things later on what i've done here is i've given myself a bit of an adjustable system pull this out here and you move it down this is a button head cap screw you'll see it's nicely rounded off it doesn't damage the battery so what we do here is we effectively drop these 
screws in here. So we put two washers under the screw and we drop it in there. For these electrode contacts we are going to use M4 button head cap screws. They're about 25 mils long or an inch long. These batteries, these lithium laptop batteries, thousands and thousands of them are going to end up in landfills if we don't make robots. So do your part to save the environment. And now you might be wondering but what stops them just from tipping out when we turn the robot the right way up. For about a dollar, maybe just less than a dollar in South Africa, for nine rand you can buy elastic bands at your local stationary shop. When we hold a robot up, those batteries are held in place and this is going to be a very long lasting robot because these batteries last forever just about. So we're going to put that screw back there in that hole. You see there, you put the black pegs in there and this is going to reinforce our structure so if we drop the robot the wheel assembly along with the battery assembly is likely to come undone and fall off the robot if we don't make this final step where we're putting a reinforcing bar in there but I normally only put nylock nuts into places where I know that particular part is going to move through several generations of modifications with the robot and it's not going to be changed in a hurry. Obviously we're going to hook up the wires here. Remember these batteries are going to be connected in series which means positive, negative, positive, negative. What I normally do is I take a bit of my wife's nail varnish over there and some nail varnish over here to remind me of which way around to put the batteries in and it's also a good idea to do that on the battery itself as well. Incidentally, these rubber bands are not only just to hold the batteries in place, they also hold the contactors in this makeshift battery pack. They hold the contactors nice and firmly onto the battery so you don't get a bad connection. 